Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to bring the house. It's the Sunday Blitz with Zach Boren, and we've got an interesting one for you. I don't know any other word for it. There are actually a lot of them. I'm curious which one Zach uses to describe Ohio State 35, Youngstown State 7. What do you got, Zach? Man, I, I think everyone can go so many different way, ways with this, right? I think a lot of Buckeye Nation will say another uninspiring win. I think some people will say, God, thank God we've got an answer at quarterback now. Um, you know, a lot of people will point to kind of the inability to run the football again. I know a lot of people, including myself, are going to say how we hate the new college football rules of the running clock because there are so many limited possessions. Um, in my opinion, it's a mixed bag. I mean, there's so many things that you can look at um, from this game with Kyle McCord finally, you know, being efficient, hitting some home run passes to Marvin, which I think everyone loved. Um, you saw Travion Henderson run extremely hard, probably the hardest he's ran in, in since his freshman year um, and did some really good things. Uh, but, but, you know, there's obviously some some glaring issues with this team when um, – you know, you obviously in short yarded situations are still having some trouble running the football and getting uh, those short yardage gains. You're um, still having kind of the inability to rush the passer and get to the quarterback. Um, so there's there's some things that this team definitely needs to work on. Um, they're going to be able to get after the quarterback this week because it's Western Kentucky. So we'll see what happens um, when you get a different look. And I guess that's the other. It's also the the good thing. That's a positive. You face an Indian Indiana team last week who showed you triple option. You showed a Youngstown State team who wanted to run the football because they wanted to eat up as much clock. And you're going to face a Western Kentucky team next week who's going to throw the football uh, 40, 50 times a game, however many places they can get in. Um, so you're having three different looks before going on the road at Notre Dame. So, <clears throat> Zach, when you say mixed bag, you know, we spent a lot of time last week talking about the improvements from week one to week two. I think there's probably a handful of places that you can say that did happen. Maybe some where you'd say that you you didn't necessarily see it. And that's part of having a mixed bag to evaluate. I'm, I wonder how much stock you actually are putting into this game. We're breaking it down. They only play 12. We're going to talk about the good and bad out of every game they play. Does it does an underwhelming win against an FCS team, uninspired win, I think you said, like, does it matter a whole lot to you? Do are are you feeling concern about some of those areas or do you are you just going to flush this one and move on i think you almost have to flush it um you know I, i've talked to a lot of people now post playing and everyone's like what's it like to or everyone asks what's it like to put on the scarlet and gray and play in a football game you come to ohio state to play in the big games like you run out to play penn state Wisconsin on the road, Notre Dame on the road, Michigan. Like those four games are the games that I guarantee you that team in the locker room is circling. When you play, yeah, I mean, it's a new game at home against a Division One double A team. It's kind of like, hey, this is a lose lose situation because if we come out and hammer this team, it's what we're expected to do. If we come out and kind of eh, go right, go through the motions and nonchalant, it's like, what the hell is going on? Um, <laughs> It's just kind of a tough – it's a tough game to play, right? So I think looking at it, you, you got to take the positive. There are some some glaring things that I think uh, – if things popped out on the tape this week that didn't against Indiana, I would, I would flush it, say no issue. Now, if there were issues that we saw against Indiana and they repeated themselves against Youngstown State, that's where I think you have to really be like, okay, what's going on? This could be a major problem. All right, so last week you made it clear that your your coaching desire on the Sunday Blitz is to start with some negatives and then finish with the positive. So what has you, I don't know, intrigued, concerned after week two that I, I think it, for me, it starts on the defensive line. I don't know if you agree with that. Like we, we looked at week one against Indiana and they ran the triple options like, okay, well, there's no pass rush because Indiana is not trying to pass. And then it still didn't really click in against a more traditional attack and against Youngstown State you would think you know five star JT Tuimolo out five star Jack Sawyer you know top 50 players like Tyreek Williams and Mike Hall would be real game wreckers and you know I, I didn't feel that so I don't know if I'm going to force you I guess to start with the defensive line uh that's where I would start um I think 
that is where the biggest concerns are on this team right now. Um, they're still rotating at an alarming rate. Um, where I think they need to dial it in. Let those top four guys go until they need to come off the field or until they're kind of dra dragging their feet on a long mm -hmm. drive. Um, they need to be able to get into the rhythm rhythm of the game. Every defender out there will tell you, I want to be in every single snap because I need to get into a rhythm. When you're coming off the field, then going back in the field, you're out for a series. It's impossible to get into the rhythm. Um, but – the production that you're seeing, I think JTT and I think, you know, some of those defensive tackles played well last week. Um, was that production there this week? No. Uh, what scares me the most, though, is if JTT or Mike Hall aren't in the game or aren't getting to the quarterback, we haven't really seen anyone else that's able to do that. Um, you know, you have Tyleek Williams, you have uh, Ty Hamilton, who I both love as players, but mm -hmm. those are pass rush guys. Those are run stoppers. Those are guys to fill the gaps and, and shut down run. Those guys would be great on rundowns against Notre Dame. The issue is you have to be able to get after a quarterback in this league or on this schedule. You've got, uh, you know, Sam Hartman, who's played really well this year. You've got Drew Aller at Penn State, who's played really well. And obviously the last game of the year, JJ McCarthy, who people are, uh, you know, already saying is going to go for the Heisman Trophy next to Caleb Williams. So, those three guys, you have to be able to apply pressure during the game, and you can't just do that from the blitz packages that Jim Knowles dials up. And I think that's where uh, Ohio State has been getting pressures on different blitz packages. You have to be able to let the front four guys rush, get after the quarterback, and be able to do that on their own, and that's not happening. What about in the on the other side of the line, Zach? It, it felt like, I don't know, the pass protection seems pretty good from Ohio State's offensive line. Uh, at least through two weeks, they're, they're not. Um, it hasn't seemed like Kyle McCord has been under a great amount of duress, and there have been some plays that have both with Kyle McCord and Devin Brown where they've had to extend with their feet and uh, have you know escaped some of that if there have been breakdowns. Run blocking, I don't know, might be that mixed bag that you're talking about. Um, but physically, it doesn't seem like they're unable to do it. It wasn't like miscommunication felt like a big problem for them on Saturday, but you can't have two holding calls and an illegal hands to the face and get this, get any offense behind the chains. Well, especially you can't get behind the chains this year because your number of possessions are, are, are number, right? Let, let's yeah. go to Youngstown state and you only get nine possessions. What happens when you, you know, are, are playing in a, in a big time game and you've got a team who's really able to run the football, like, like a Michigan, you know, like a Penn State, like a Notre Dame, those teams can really run the football with some great running backs. Um, so what's going to happen then, right? You cannot get those costly penalties. The offensive line, to me, looked better than it did against Indiana. I think against Indiana, there were tons of miscommunication on run, on run schemes. Guys weren't getting off on their double teams in time. You saw a lot of run-throughs from the linebackers. This week, you didn't see that as much. But one thing kind of bothers me a little bit is that they're not able to be dominant inside the tackles you know the we saw it a little bit with trip chip train um against indiana where he was breaking some tackles and doing some stuff on his own but really the the home runs that they're hitting right now are on the outside they're, they're getting mm -hmm. the edge. trayvon henderson on his on his touchdown run getting the edge we see early on the game where they get some nine ten yard gains getting on the edge you have to be able to do that coming straight downhill between the tackles and that's just kind of, hey, mano y mano, we got to move them from the line of scrimmage. And that's something Ohio State's got to get back to and it's got to be successful at. And that might be, you know, that might be something that's a little concerning that they're not able to do that, especially like uh, against a team like Youngstown State. Yeah, it feels like we've been having that conversation for uh, way too long. Um, I'm not sure what the solution is going to be um, because they've, They've got the person. They had the personnel a year ago. They had three NFL offensive linemen. It was still something in short yardage that we were talking about uh, breakdowns in third and short and fourth and short. Um, I don't know what the solution is, Zach. I mean, we're, they're not paying us nine million dollars to come up with it, which is maybe part of the issue on my end. But I, I don't know. It, it feels like they're just banging their heads against the wall, and there's there's got to be other ways to get around it. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a lot of people, fans will say it's the run scheme. You know, you can't get downhill in the gun, but that's not true. You see the game evolve. Look at, you know, I'm sure a lot of Buckeye fans watch the Texas-Alabama game. 
Texas was able to run the football, even though Quinn Ewers went off, but they were still able to run the football. And they're running the same inside zone plays from the gun that Ohio State's running. And those guys were able to create some movement, running backs able to get downhill, break some runs. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not a scheme thing. It At the end of the day, it's, hey, we're going to line up, put our hands in the dirt, fire off, and who can move who? And I think at some point, Ohio State's just got to get that attitude of, hey, we're Ohio State, we're going to come and, and dominate you every snap, and we're coming downhill, and we're going to hit you right in the mouth. Yep, uh, and that would help uh, the quarterbacks as well. Do you think, Zach, that the Buckeyes have seen enough now to – Pick one guy, stick with it, and then put that offense and build it fully around one guy. I think you have to. Um, you know, based off of what we saw against Indiana, based off of what we saw this past week, Kyle McCord's got to be your guy. You know, I know everyone's talking about there's competition in, in, in training camp, and I truly believe there was. Um, you know, now looking back, I, I think reading between the lines, Colin McCord kind of always had that upper hand, but he just didn't do enough to separate himself. Well, through the first two games, and especially this past Saturday, um, with Devin Brown given the opportunity to throw the football to lead some some meaningful drives, I think you have to give the ball to Colin McCord. And it goes back to kind of the defensive line thing. You know, a lot of people want to say Ohio State's not putting up the points goes back to defensive rotating, right? When you're rotating a quarterback, it's hard to get that flow. Any quarter, No quarterback wants to come off the field. Why do you think, you know, no other teams rotate their quarterback, uh, <laughs> you know, during a game? It's um, it's one of those things that, hey, Ohio State was able to do it early on in the season because uh, of the inferior opponents that they were playing. But now I think you've got to go full steam ahead. And I think if you were to talk to Ryan Day, he'd want that starter to be named going into week three against Western Kentucky. So that guy can literally play the entire game. They can try some different things before going on the road at ND. Yeah. And it, to me, it, it's not necessarily even a matter of like, it has to be one guy or the other. Uh, I mean, I don't care. Whoever wins the job wins the job. Ohio State needs to have the quarterback who gives them the best chance to win a national championship or to win in late November. Um, but it, <clears throat> part of the issue, like watching the first two weeks for me, and you talk about quarterbacks getting in a rhythm, I wonder if that applies to the other 10 guys. Zach, you've been a part of this. Like, if It looks like the offense that Ohio State is running is completely different for each quarterback, and I don't know how much more difficult that would make it if you have to expand the playbook and the game plan every week for not just to account for the quarterback, but for everybody to be able to run it. You're, you're spot on. The The guys around that offense want the same guy in there. It, it's you, you get comfortable with that person. It's, you know, it's the same thing with defense alignment. I'm going to go back to it. When you're the Mike linebacker, you want the same guys in front of you. You kind of know how they play. You, you trust your instincts at what you see them do. As soon as you throw in someone else in front of you and all of a sudden they pull a different move or, you know, they, they take the wrong gap or they do something that's completely different than what it is, you get caught. And next thing you know, guy busts a long one. And so it's the same thing with wide receiver. It's the same thing with an offense lineman. It's, you know, if you're the tackle and you're like, hey, I got a speed rush, but you know, hey, Kyle McCord normally steps up or, hey, Devin Brown tries to spin out of it and, and get around the edge. Those are two completely different maneuvers that a quarterback uh, does reacting to pressure. And so it's like, hey. Mm -hmm. Where's that where's that comfortable uh setting for that offense to be like, hey, this is our guy. We know what's gonna happen. We know how, you know, what he likes to do, even from a play calling standpoint, right? We talk about the the mixed bag of play calling, and everyone in Buckeye Nation wants to talk about how conservative co conservative they were against Indiana and mm -hmm. the inability to throw up monster points against Youngstown State. Well, when you've got different quarterbacks in, you got to expand the play sheet because they obviously do things. Uh, differently and they do do different things better and so what kind of flow can you get into and that goes from the players to the coaches and all the way around and I think you have to go with Kyle McCord I think he sets them up perfectly um, you can even go back to 2015 when Ohio State first started that season with the JT Barrett and Cardell Jones um, you know kind of experiment everyone says oh Virginia Tech they beat Virginia Tech on the road if you remember back Braxton Miller broke a jet sweep that went for a long one. I think Zeke broke two long touchdown runs on run plays. 
the quarterback wasn't winning you that game. It was very much, hey, we're able to run the football. We're able to do some different things. That's what got it. And that season didn't take off until JT Barrett was truly the guy. And they're like, hey, listen, the ball is yours. The offense is yours. Go get it. And I think that's what we're waiting to see with this Ohio State offense this year again. Well, that will be the most interesting development probably of this week leading up to Western Kentucky. But as we, Zach, put a a bow on the Sunday Blitz with a three and out. Who were the? Who are some three guys that you want to recognize uh, for the win? Yeah, I think number one is you have to um, go with Kyle McCord as number three. You know what he was able to do, um, throwing the football, coming out, putting the kind of noise behind him, being the quarterback at Ohio State. You hear that noise, and that noise is louder to you than it is anyone else on the team. So for him to um, be able to come out lead that first drive, get that long one to Marvin, I think come back on the third series and hit another deep one to Marvin. Just just happy for the way he played, proud of the way he played. Um, he deserves to be the starting quarterback. He's my third star. Number two, got to be Marvin, right? Coming out, having seven receptions, 160 yards, two touchdowns. That was by halftime. You know, and then he didn't really do much in the second half. But I think you saw, you know, Devin Brown get some more series in there in the second half. Um, you know, he was out there somewhat, but there just wasn't that flow that you saw in the first half. But so to be able to put up those kind of stats, um, you know, in, in a first half, crushing it. And then my number one star, this is going to be a, maybe a shock to you as well. Ooh. But this is a guy who I named last week, Denzel Burke. Is my Denzel number. Burke. Denzel Burke. He played extremely well. Um, had the first INT, what they say, first INT since 2021 for a, for for a corner. State yep. Corner, <laughs> for a high state corner. Um, and I'm also giving him my first star because he came out even, even after the game. He came out and said, Hey, listen, I think he used the word uninspired win. And he goes, we've got a lot to work on. Um, we got to get back into it. We got to be dogs and come out attacking. You need a guy like that. You know, you can't say, hey, every single win's good. You won 35 to 7. Awesome. It's a, you know, handed. It, 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 I mean, you there was no game at, at all. You know, even after Young South State tied at 7-7. Seven, seven, I don't think anyone in the horseshoe ever thought like, oh, my God, this could be a close game. But for Denzel Burke to come out afterwards and be outspoken and say, hey, we got to get better. We need to do the little things better. Um, to me, that goes a long way. For that, number one star. That makes me feel good because I picked him as my defensive player of the game for our story uh, over at uh, Dotting the Eyes. So I love when I'm seeing the game the same way you are. I love Zach. It, it wasn't just the pick, which, again, was the first one for a corner of the Jim Knowles era. But I, I really noticed on Saturday, and I talked about it, Two plays before that was coming up to support against the run. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked last year about his year and like some of the business decisions he may have been making when it came to physicality and get, you know even on blitzes and missing the quarterback. You know, I remember a play at Maryland that stands out in my mind, and I know that he was hurt. That was part of it. Uh, you know, I'm not saying anything that hasn't been discussed with Denzel himself, um, but to go up there and make a play against the run, the helmet fly flies off, the the skull cap flies off. You have to come out for a play, but he stops the run. Has to come out, goes back in, and then just perfect coverage in phase where you get to turn around and play the football. Like couldn't have drawn up a better sequence for Denzel Burke than that one. No, I completely agree with you. And I think one of the best things for him is OGB coming in. You see OGB in the way he plays, and he's brought that. I don't want to call it SEC because I think the Big Ten can hang on with SEC all day. And if you look at the SEC and the way they're performing this year, it's not, it's not very good. But he just kind of brought that swagger of like, hey, listen, this is the way we're going to play. Put us on an island. Doesn't matter what you do. We're going to come up. We're going to play the run good. We're going to uh, play with our hands. when it, it, We're going to be some dogs, essentially. And I think Denzel Burke even mentioned that after the game. It's just you need that dog mentality. And so having both those guys there I think are great. Denzel Burke having another guy at corner that's outspoken, uh, that's got that mentality, I think is great for him. I'm excited to see what these DBs can do. I think you saw Saturday. Uh, or yesterday for the very first time. You saw that nickel package come in where Jordan Hancock actually came in. They were playing all three corners, which is going to mm -hmm. be a great thing, especially when you're playing, you know, Notre Dame when they go in that spread offense, especially when uh, you go against uh, the Penn State to the world. Like, you need all three cornerbacks to play very, very well, and I'm excited to see what all three of those guys can do as they grow throughout the season. Big week for them coming up as well with Western Kentucky coming in trying to throw it around 
as many times as possible. We have a lot more coverage coming all week long to get ready for that one, as always, on the podcast. And Zach will be back as well. We've got one Buck IQ under our belt. I don't, do we need to do the touchdown drive, or do we need to focus on the positives for week two, Zach? I don't. We'll have to you, figure that one out. Your choice. We can we can touch on whatever you want, but your choice. <laughs> All right. So Buck IQ will be coming. Great to have Zach Boren's uh, insight and analysis. As always, this has been the Sunday Blitz. He is Zach Boren. I am Austin Ward, and we will talk to you later.